Um, there we go, recording is starting. All right, good afternoon everyone. Wendy O'Sullivan, I'm the superintendent from MPS Chesapeake. I am joined today with a team from our office uh, here in Annapolis, along with the National Park Service Stewardship Office. Um, and Rebecca, will you say hello? Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Sure. Um, so this session is um, part of a series of what we call network chats related to the MPS Chesapeake Gateways program. Um, and today the focus really is on um, sharing information about a new grant program that we'll be starting up later this fall. And this will serve also as not just sharing about the new grant program, but listening to our partners on how they see our grant themes lining up with needs and interests and opportunities that you all are working on out uh, across the watershed. Um, so how we, uh, I just want to quick share the agenda um, for today. If we go to the next slide, um, we're going to run through a calendar reminder. We have a series of partner sessions lined up to run through this fall into the new calendar year. So we'll run through that really quickly. Then we always start our meetings with what we call networking triads, where it's an opportunity to uh, meet old friends, meet new people, just connect as a collective across um, the Chesapeake partners and the, and the watershed. Then we'll do an overview of the programs and partnerships of our office and the and the new um, strategic plan and our new grant program that we'll be launching later this fall will line up is is lining up with our strategic themes from our new five year strategic plan. Um, then we'll break into small groups and do some listening sessions and discussions about those four strategic themes and really want to hear from partners in those smaller groups. So um, we'll break into three rooms. So just a, a little bit more opportunity to have conversations with smaller groups. And then we'll get back together, kind of regroup, talk about next steps, go through that calendar of um, future sessions again. So people have it on, um, on their radar. So with that, um, if we could slide to the next slide. And, and I'll just share here, um, and, and we'll be able to share this out. It was also attached, a version of this timeline was attached to um, the original invitation notice that went out. Um, and that is to say that we have a series of sessions coming up. Um, you see right here where we are, which is the strategic themes and grant listening session. Uh, in September, we're going to do a session with um, one of our strategic partners, the, conser um, to the Conservation Fund, to introduce a new initiative we're starting, which is the Chesapeake Gateway Communities Program. Uh, also in September, uh, by the end of September, our target is to actually announce the formal notice of funding availability uh, opportunity will be announced for the new Chesapeake Gateway Grants Assistance Program. Um, and then we'll do a series of grant program um, briefings and uh, grant program proposal trainings. You'll see here that there are multiple dates, so we're going to repeat those. Um, and then what you'll see is the next big red um, target date there is when the deadline of the grants are. Because this is the first time in, a, in quite some time that we've done a um, formal call and competitive process for the Chesapeake Gateways funding, we're leaving, plan to leave the call open for multiple months to be able to raise awareness about the grant opportunity for partners to really work on proposals. So the application deadline is targeted right now to be the end of January. Um, so in between there, as we're doing training and sessions about the new grant proposals, um, we're also going to do a, a session on becoming a Chesapeake Gateway community. Um, because you'll learn in just a little bit that that 
the Chesapeake Gateway Community Program is one of our strategic themes. Um, and then sort of a TBD out there in 2023 is to set a date to gather for um, an annual conference of the Chesapeake Gateway's partners and um, uh, to gather again. We used to hold annual conference for Chesapeake Gateways and we're looking to stand that up again in the future. So uh, I'll just stop there for a sec to people to take a look at that. Again, we will be sharing this out. There'll be individual um, meeting invitations and registration to sign up for all of these sessions that we are planning to book out through the fall. Um, but to get us started this this afternoon, I'm going to pass it to Rebecca to talk with us about, um, in case there's some new folks, about our networking triads and how we get started on each of these network chats. Thank you, Wendy. So if you've been with us before, you're getting pretty familiar with this process of our networking triads. And if this is your first time, we really like to start these sessions with an opportunity for all of us in the community to connect, meet new people, connect with previous colleagues, old friends, and hear what's happening, um, a way of really working on rebuilding the network and making sure that we're engaging across boundaries, organizations, all the different ways that we connect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into little breakout groups, triads, uh, most likely if the numbers work out. Um, and in those triads, you're gonna share your name and your organization. And then our question for this session is what's been keeping you busy this summer? And that can be something inside of work that's keeping you busy or something outside, but what has really had your focus and attention uh, throughout the summer months as we start to wind them down? So you're gonna go into those groups. You'll have about 10 minutes in those groups and then we'll bring you back together. We'll share a little bit and then we'll move into today's topic. Any questions before we get started? All right, I'm going to open the rooms. What were some things that folks heard? You can share in the chat or come off mute that were kind of interested you about what folks were up to this summer. People were traveling again. Now that COVID's over, people back on travel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That has yeah, I think get, getting back to summer camps, that was a kind of a conversation in our breakout room. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kind of that return to what we used to do and that traveling again and all that visitation both impacts professionally and personally. Yep. All right. Well, thanks everyone for taking that. Oh, I thought I heard a voice. It was me. No, it's okay. Oh, go ahead, Anne. We got time for one more. Oh, Wendy, it was you. Yeah, I think we're ready to kind of start the slide deck again and, and we'll dive into just a little background on the MPS Chesapeake office and then, um, and then uh, Bob Campbell and Eddie Gonzalez from our team will walk through um, the strategic themes. All right, so we always start here to show the full map of the Chesapeake watershed. So everyone is grounded in the scale and scope of what and where we are talking about that um, the office for the MPS um, Chesapeake focuses on. It is the full 40, almost 41 million acre watershed. Um, that runs from upstate New York down um, through Virginia. And, um, and, and represented on the left here are, are the three big partnerships that the MPS is both an active member in, leads or co-convenes. Um, so next slide. We are, the MPS is a major partner in the Chesapeake Bay program. You see here the jurisdictions and the, and the primary federal agencies. There's a little plus next to the federal agencies because there's many, many more that are part of that, as well as um, nonprofit partners, education institutes that uh, are part of the Bay program. What you see around the watershed agreement with these um, circles are the 
goals of the um, the watershed agreement. That's the 2014 watershed agreement with with arcing to 2025. And the green circles are those um, goals that the MPS is the um, primary lead on helping to facilitate, um, track, coordinate around. There are work groups for each of those um, each of those goal areas. We also have responsibility as the National Park Service in the other areas, primarily um, water quality. There are 58 units of the national park system within the watershed and national park units within the watershed. And um, which also means we're very engaged and have been for many years related to climate um, resiliency and taking action uh, to help parks and, and their communities around it um, prepare for, for impacts from climate. Um, next slide. We're also um, the founder of and, and still co-convene with the Chesapeake Conservancy, what is known as the Chesapeake Conservation Partnership. That is a large landscape collaborative of over 50 member organizations that are government agencies, land, uh, state and federal and local, as well as land trusts and tribal members. And really CCP is a collaborative that um, is striving to conserve 30% of the watershed by 2030. The focus is on um, these key areas here that you see, farms, forest, habitat, heritage, and human health. We have um, done mapping through our partnership with the Chesapeake Conservancy to map those five areas that then when you overlay those important um, five themes, you come up with what the CCP identifies as valued lands. Um, and that's a, just an example of a map there. But really it is about being, um, having advancing equitable conservation. And you see sort of the, the, the list of um, focus and, and areas of attention that CCP strives for on the right there. Um, next slide. And then of course it's, um, you know, the, the primary congressional um, directed partnership that we manage and run is the Chesapeake Gateways. Um, we receive appropriations that help us achieve all of our work in those other areas, the two other Chesapeake Bay program and CCP that all or originates with Chesapeake Gateways. Gate, Chesapeake Gateways um, is focused on places, people, stories, really at the center of equity and inclusion. And there are different scales when we think about gateways. There's the individual sites. There are over 300 places that tell a piece of what makes the Chesapeake watershed and the Chesapeake Bay special. And there, we also function and work at a landscape regional scale. So really thinking about the way people relate to their places isn't necessarily a lot uh, instantly aligned with the Chesapeake. They might more readily think of themselves to their local waterway, like the upper Susquehanna or the lower James. Um, and so we like to think of the um, regional level as well. And um, starting up, we are also starting to plan for how Gateways will deploy itself, support, and um, provide um, technical and financial assistance at a community scale. And we'll hear more about that um, coming forward. So I'm going to um, pass it now and introduce um, Bob Campbell, who many, many of you know, and as well as Eddie Gonzalez um, to take the next few slides. Um, really, it's, it's to say that we have been functioning for <clears throat> over 20 years, doing incredible work with our partners all across the watershed. And we've recently worked with our partners to develop and refresh our two grounding guiding documents. One is um, what we call our framework document, the one on, um, on the left. And then the other is our new five-year strategic plan. 
So I'll pass it to Bob to sort of take it us from here to talk through with us about the strategic plan and, and he and Eddie will run through our new four strategic themes that the grants will be um, grounded in. Thank you, thank you, Wendy. Um, Rebecca, I guess we'll go on to the next slide. Yes, we'll use this one. So, so I'm gonna uh, uh, just to, within the last few minutes, I made this this same this same uh, pitch and gesture, and I'm gonna do it again, right? It's the Venn diagram, right? What what uh, uh, where where the strength and beauty of partnerships uh, lies is in is in the overlapping of of interests. Uh, for those of you that have known the known the of the Chesapeake Gateways Network for for a long time, you've watched us uh, go through some ebbs and flows. Uh, some things have been consistent about our focus, and other things have have responded to uh, you know to moments in time. And what we want to do today is just sort of sort of takes a little bit of time to be sure that you have a fresh sense of of where our focus currently is. Uh, which is which is largely consistent with uh, with a, a long vision, you know, several several decades worth, but also uh, as much as possible responsive uh, to some things that are sort of clarion calls of 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 the moment. So over the last couple of years, we've we've engaged uh, many of you. Uh, some some of you have have missed that opportunity in the development of a fresh strategic plan. And so as far as our side of the Venn diagram goes, uh, that strategic plan is, is where our, uh, our interests are focused these days and will be uh, largely where our financial assistance uh, focus will be. So for you all, it's, it'll be about understanding what, uh, what our focus is and how it relates to, to your own. Um, there's one of the beauties of the Chesapeake Gateways Network is, is that we found over the years so much common interest with, with many of your organizations and, and you with, with each other. So part of, part of why we do the triads is always to have an opportunity for you to just meet one another. Part of why we, we do these series of network chats is to keep you engaged in, in, uh, in, in our current thinking and where it's going. So these four things that you're, you've now been reading on this slide represent uh, the new sort of uh, strategic pillars that, uh, that we are focusing on in our, in our work uh, together over the course of the, uh, the last year and will be the focus area for, again, for our, our financial assistance uh, and our grants that we would be making. So for the first one, the rebuilding core network capabilities and services, uh, there's, this is somewhat about saying, we're not starting from scratch. We're building on, on, uh, on history, precedent, previous capabilities, things that work well and trying to fine tune those. So, so we are, again, always about framing the common vision and clarifying uh, the goals. That's why we have this new, a strategic plan to share with you. We're always interested in providing technical assistance and training. That's why Wendy was emphasizing up front the series of, of network chats and training events that we'll be doing over the, the course of the fall. Um, but we also, you know, so so priority is on that, but we also have uh, have a, a, a real opportunity now, it, see, it seems to, to uh, not only work with uh, uh, old friends and existing partners, but but the need to find some new partners that can help us uh, expand our outreach to to uh, to include uh, some new communities of interest uh, that that are representing uh, new resource sites or underrepresented resource sites, and that can be critically involved in helping us expand the story that we're. Uh, that we're able to able to tell. Uh, several of these things under the actions and initiatives are things that the NPS Chesapeake itself is doing. What we'll want to hear from you today is about things that you might do locally to help build your uh, your capabilities and services uh, in support of, of of the network interests. Uh, next slide. 
and uh, and this this one constitutes a uh, a real uh, a real commitment uh, in the moment to uh, to doing the best possible job that we can with you all to to have our storytelling uh, be be comprehensive as it's always has intended to be inclusive of of all of the aspects of Chesapeake Bay uh, culture history. Uh, uh, natural history, uh, but also also to be sure that we are that we are in fact uh, being true to the uh, to the to the full story, the stories of communities who's who's uh, who have too often been left out of the uh, out of the mix, and and so we uh, we have a particular interest as we find ourselves on the front edge of this grant program and the opportunity to provide some technical and financial assistance uh, uh, to you all for developing inclusive interpretation programming and experiences uh, at, at your gateways uh, to, um, to include your full communities. And, and, uh, and this, this again is, is, uh, is one of the things that's both a durable interest and also, we believe a, 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 a critically important uh, reaction to, uh, to to the moment and and uh, and the needs for uh, for full representation in in the stories that we're telling. Eddie, thanks, Bob. So moving on to the next uh, two, uh, you know, I was at a great conference last week that was all about community engagement and working, uh, you know, how to uh, tackle some of these big community issues at the community level. And one of the uh, uh, um, uh, lessons that came out of that for me was a phrase they kept saying that said something about uh, nothing about us uh, without us. So, you know, and the other one that they mentioned that really struck me was uh, the answer to the the solutions to the problems are are in the community. So when we start looking at where there's opportunity to invest, we really want to find out where communities are telling us they need investments. Uh, you know where we can be as an office uh, a catalytic point to get a conversation to the next level, or get a project to the next level, or an idea to the next level. Um, but you know, it's really the communities that are going to be making those assessments of where those needs are, uh, and so we want to be able to be an office that is uh, open to those ideas, but also helps communities talk through um, putting labels on what some of those needs are, whether it's uh, stormwater uh, uh, mitigation as a way of uh, opening up different areas to community uh, involvement or um, uh, you know, tourism strategies, uh, capitalizing on local assets, workforce development, you know, what are some of the barriers that are keeping certain ideas from moving forward? So that's the space we want to be in within resilient communities and landscapes. Uh, but it's it's called almost a, a you know, a, 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 a challenge uh, area where you know, we want to know where we can be best positioned to help local communities be more resilient uh, and invest on their issues. Uh, and then, you know, there's definitely a tipping point where, you know, uh, groups that are working at the community level, uh, you start getting some um, uh, some uh, a congruency with what's going on at the municipal level. And all of a sudden, uh, we're able to look at some of the work that we're doing or the work that we want to be doing uh, at, uh, at a gateway community level. So that's where uh, certain pieces have come together. You've got branding questions, you've got infrastructure questions, you've got programming. Uh, various different people looking at various different aspects of it that can all come together and have a cumulative impact for an area. Uh, you know, I've had an opportunity to visit some of the smaller towns that are really investing in this community level view. Uh, you know, a town like Cambridge particularly comes to mind where they're now at a point where it's a very receptive community to ideas. They're starting to see how all of these ideas are going to add benefit, not just to the uh, the neighbors where they're working, but to the city as a whole and things that they're going to be able to say about what they're doing to, to uh, uh, provide more access, to provide more support. So within that frame, we want to know where there's communities that are already ready to come together uh, and just need some assistance in organizing and uh, facilitating those next conversations. Uh, those Between those four, you know, that's the level of 
uh, of um, parameter we're looking at, but you could make a case for almost any kind of project fitting in there in those four ideas. So we're really hoping there's a lot of uh, uh, thoughts and, and light bulbs already bubbling up uh, as you heard Bob and I talk through those four of things that uh, you might want to um, communicate to us when we get to the breakouts. And I think it goes back to Rebecca. Yeah, now. thank you, Wendy, Bob, and Eddie for that overview. So what we're going to do next is we're going to break into three small groups and Wendy, Bob, and Eddie are going to each be in one of the small groups and we'll have the opportunity to go into a little bit more in depth in each of these strategic areas. Um, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions, think about what projects might align with that. But so really a chance to go deep. But before we do that, any sort of top of mind clarifying questions that folks have um, that we want to just see if we can address real quick. You can pop it in the chat or come off mute. I think we'll have lots of time in the groups to make sure this is going to be the bulk of the rest of our time together is really giving you a chance in smaller groups. Uh, not seeing any hands come up. All right. So I have you set in your three groups with Eddie, Wendy, and Bob as your fearless leads. Um, I'm going to admit one more person. And we're going to take um, close to 40 minutes in these groups, going to walk through each of the four strategic areas. So really make sure that you're asking any questions that you're having, getting the clarity that you're seeking, and that you're coming up with what are some of the, the projects or ideas that might align. And then we'll, we'll come back and close out. I'm going to launch the rooms now. I hope that those were some really good conversations. Well, I, we ran out of it. time. I don't know about the other rooms, but we ran, we ran out of time. We got through three of the four. Um, I'm not sure about the Eddie or Bob. How, how far did you guys get? Two. No, two. <laughs> good conversation, though. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good, good. We we did four. Mm -hmm. All right, Bob's group gets the gold star. They made it through. <laughs> uh, All right. We'll see. We'll, yeah. Deep conversation. We'll have good anything, coverage. Yeah. Anything you want to share that came out of um, some of that dialogue? Pull up the chat again. One of my takeaways is that. Um, we need to bring Ann Kyle into our, you know, brainstorming session. She had, she's like every single category. She's like had such great, you know, ideas, you know, and um, so Ann, I appreciate um, uh, and I took lots of notes um, and our and our whole our whole breakout room had, you know, both some ready to go um, ideas, some great questions. Um, so it was exciting. Um, from that standpoint. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I think we had a little challenge getting started, but then once we did, the the fountains flowed with ideas. Well, I would just add that, that uh, you know, we had a specific call out and, and commendation for the uh, Chesapeake Storytellers Program in our group as well. And and uh, you know kudos to MOTD for for their work in doing that and 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 uh, our session I I think people were thinking that 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 model you know might well be extended uh, to you know into other applications for example you know um, Eddie's comment about you know no stories about us without us you know, would, would say, could we do training programs to help grow people of color into docents for their own programs? Could we, could we do more, more training for, you know, for young professionals that are just getting started with organizations and that, that need to, uh, need an opportunity for training and, and uh, more experiences as, as effective interpreters. Um, so, they think we need to we need to figure out how to scale it up for a lot of other purposes.
Maybe one more thing that folks talked about in those small groups. Mike? Yeah, we, we, we can bouncing ideas, but uh, the idea of, of developing traveling exhibits and traveling training programs that can be shared amongst sites. Uh, mm -hmm. Many, many years ago, I, I pulled together all the small museums down here in Tidewater into a collective group for developing grants. It's kind, kind of kind of been gone on the wayside, but it's time to, to reconnect all seven or eight small museums down on my end of the world to develop programming. Mm -hmm. And traveling exhibits that everybody could curmudgeon on would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could, they could spend time in each of the museums and bounce around. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and that falls into several, into at least three of these grant mm -hmm. categories, if not all four. Mm -hmm. But that idea of taking advantage of some of these smaller entities coming together to create exhibits, the training. So you might have a small staff here and a small staff here, but when you bring them together, you get a really robust number and are able to reach some really excellent training. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Oh, Wendy. Yeah, I was going to say thank you as well. Um, you know, this was a, a helpful opportunity for us to listen and to hear some of the, you know, early ideas. Where we're at in this process is is listening. Um, what is coming? Oh, thanks. Great. Um, what is what is coming up next um, is a session to introduce to all of our partners the concept of this new initiative to create the Chesapeake Gateway Communities um, initiative. And um, <clears throat> because that is a, uh, a new effort, we'll want you know, as many to join in, and listen in on that as well, because the concept is to, um, to also listen and learn. Where, where things are at with the grants um, program is that um, coming up at the end of September, beginning of October, the official announcement will come out. So what we did today was kind of uh, a bit of a, uh, an early sense of here are our strategic themes, the grants will align with those strategic themes and an opportunity to start to hear like, okay, like, is this going to work? Are, are there ideas and opportunities out there that can be funded under, under those themes? So that September timeline, um, early October, will be when we do the official announcement. It'll indicate the categories, uh, it'll indicate the funding thresholds, um, <clears throat> and we'll present that very formally. There'll be a formal, what's called notice of funding opportunity. It's called an, N an NFO. Um, and, and that will get posted. So really, you know, we don't have a lot of details right now because it isn't yet the official announcement. Um, but as you see, we have all of these sessions coming up that once the official announcement is made in um, end of September, early October, there will be multiple sessions to help um, brief more on the kinds of um, Oops. I think Wendy right. was frozen on our end. I think we might have lost Wendy. Yeah. Bob or Eddie, you want to finish that? Well, well again, I think that I think the point of, of putting these key dates out there is just so you can do your advanced planning and, and see these as a, as a, a interrelated opportunities, right? So we've we've had a chance to, you know, give you the blank flip chart and the microphone to tell us what kind of what kind of things you want? You want an opportunity for funding to support, uh, and 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 pretty soon we'll you know we've heard some things today that are that are new new ideas that that we need to respond to and some validation of of things that we already have, have integrated. So pretty much what we were after 
It's going to come out with uh, with the specific grant guidelines, and then ultimately we'll also be moving into some, uh, you know, some workshops that'll be designed to help, uh, you know, help help you figure out how to develop the best possible proposal, the most competitive proposal. Uh, but also pay attention to these ones that are about uh, the introduction to the to the Chesapeake Gateways communities. Uh, this may be a new idea for some of you, or you may be more familiar with it because you've thought about trail towns or, or uh, you know, just, you know, community ambassador programs or things like that. So we want to be able to share this concept. There are gateways communities throughout the country. The, the Conservation Fund has worked throughout the country to, to help stand up gateway communities, and they're going to help us stand up a program here for the for the Chesapeake uh, and then and then you know there's so there's an introduction and there's also one that's going to delve deeper into the kinds of kinds of projects and initiatives uh, that might be undertaken in your community and we're intending to try to get that into the mix where there would still be time for you to respond uh, with uh, potentially with proposals that would be about about supporting your gateway community work, so so these are all are all really really focused on on um, uh, helping you as best we can, you know take take your best shot at the uh, at the hmm. I'm at the sure grant opportunities. Is there something else I can help with? <laughs> Someone's serious trying to be helpful. Looks like we have Wendy back and we are right at time. So thank you all for spending the end of your Tuesday with us. Um, if you have questions, um, Eddie's information is on the next slide. Wendy, some final words for us? Yeah, the, I, I'm sorry about that. My internet just flaked out um, for a second. Um, I apologize. But um, yeah, so if we could show the next slide, um, Eddie's information um, is there. If folks have follow up questions, you know, please um, feel free to reach out to, um, to him. He's a, basically his email is edward underscore underscore gonzalez at mps.gov. Um, he would have, you would have received um, one of the original invites from him as well. Um, we're excited to stand up and relaunch um, the, the grants program. Um, it's been several years, so um, we're hopeful that our, our longstanding partners and new partners um, apply. I love Michael's idea of, of gathering partners together to apply. Um, I think innovation, equity, uh, inclusion is um, going to be our what we what we're really looking for, um, and uh, we'll, we look forward to um, seeing everybody uh, over the course of uh, the next few chats. Thanks all.